Well, here we go. It's the end of a really long work week. It's a Friday and the dogs and I are heading out to Highway 20. Um, we are going to check out a few interesting points of view tomorrow after we camp tonight. And then the next day we're gonna do a hike. We might do a little hike tomorrow as well. But Highway 20 is gorgeous, rugged, um, just the epitome of Northwest mountains. Um, so I'm really excited to show you and I'm really excited to get out there. The larches are just starting to turn so we might see a larch turning golden while we're there. But let's hit the road today. We've got to get to that first campground before dark. Well, this is not how I expected the evening to go. I got to the campground and I haven't stayed there in a long time and it used to have um, empty sites even in the summer. Like you could always find a site there, even the best site. Um, so I'm thinking it's October, it's supposed to be pretty cold tonight, and um, I got there and it's pouring down rain and every single site's taken. So I drove to the next campground, which is a New Halem campground, and it is closed for the season. And um, I have a two-wheel drive van, so I'm not going to take any dirt roads, and I'm pulled over at visitor parking in New Halem, and I'm really hoping I can stay the night. It's not meant for camping, but there's tons of parking, so I hope I don't get the knock. I'm not a stealth camper. This is not my comfort level, so we'll see how it goes. I have an update, or should we say a pup date? <laughs> well, I did get the knock. Um, I had munched a couple cookies because I wasn't going to do cooking because I didn't want to have my windows open and um, just about to put on some pajamas and say, okay, nobody's gonna wake me up on a stormy night, make me drive out on the highway again. And when somebody did, <laughs> but this person was super, super nice. They said no overnight parking, but they told me where there was a lot that I could park. Um, and there's actually another um, van parked just a little bit further back. So um, I am super stoked. I know I'm safe here. I know I'm allowed here. <laughs> And uh, it was cool because I came like across this one lane bridge and like up this hill. And as I came up the hill, like I'm in a cloud, like right now my van is surrounded by a cloud, but it's too dark. So I can't get any good pictures right now. Anyway, good night. Good morning. We were very toasty last night. It's 54 degrees in here. I just got the heater going. All right, two coffees later. The dogs had their breakfast. We went for a little walk. The squirrels were not very happy about that. Um, and now we're going to drive through the little town of New Halem and check out Ladder Falls, Ladder Creek Falls. Skagit River. It was established as a Seattle City Light Company town in 1920. There's a whole lot of electric going on here. This is the Gorge Powerhouse. The dam is located two miles upstream from the powerhouse. I'm so glad it's not raining right now. The mist just kind of adds, adds to it. So pretty. 2.7 miles up, so there's a picture of the dam. So J.D. Ross was the one who made the Ladder Creek Falls into gardens in the 1930s. And there was even a music show with the light show in the evenings. So let's go check it out. We're gonna cross that bridge right there. The mighty Skagit River, one of my favorites. See all the Japanese maples and things. A lot of non-native plants, but very pretty. Almost like a little arboretum out here.
Looks like they had a fountain at one time. This would be a beautiful koi pond. The fall might be the prettiest time to visit this place. There's Ladder Creek. Wow, okay, so J.D. Ross wanted his visitors to believe that anything was possible with electricity. So he even heated the ground to accommodate tropical plants like banana and palm trees. <laughs> There's none of those here today, but um, that's really interesting. I would have liked to have seen that. There are little um, electrical lights along the trail. I mean, that's just not something you see every day. And the lights are still used um, at night, I believe. So we do see the beautiful fall leaves in the day, but we're missing out on the light show. Here we go. Overlooking these lower falls. Very, very beautiful. Now we're going up the stairs. It's a good way to wake up in the morning. Well, they may be small falls, but they are gorgeous. Just beautiful. Let's get some more views of those. There's a tiny loop here, so um, instead of coming back down the stairs, I'm coming back down this little gravel trail. So if you don't like steps, you can take this on the way up. I've never been over on this side of the gorge. I've always just wanted to see the um, waterfall. There's like this big tunnel. Interesting. Well, we're gonna end up doing a loop because our van is just across this bridge. So instead of going back across the cool bridge, we're going across the access bridge on the way back. We have a lot to see, so I am okay with that. So we are on the other side of the Gorge Powerhouse and there is the bridge we crossed earlier. Well, that fun little leg stretcher was under three quarters of a mile and the waterfall there was beautiful. Let's go see what else we can find on Highway 20. We are at the Gorge Creek Overlook. This is um, hard on dog paws and it's a busy road. So I am going to leave the dogs in the car for this one. You can see this grate isn't very kind to dog feet. And I'm on the wrong side of the bridge. So first we're gonna look this way and then we'll come back and cross over because it's uh, much more spectacular on the other side. We are on the little Gorge Overlook Trail right out of the parking lot. I think it's super short. So this talks about the different dams. So this is Gorge Dam where we saw the Gorge Powerhouse and it creates this littler Gorge Lake. And then above that is Diablo Dam and Ross Dam which makes Diablo Lake and Ross Lake. They all kind of seem to flow together since they're all basically the Skagit River being dammed up. Let's see if we can get a view of the dam here. Here is Gorge Dam. It is pretty hidden behind these trees, but I think you can make it out. The sun is starting to light up the mist on the mountains and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. So this is actually really interesting. Um, it talks about how, you know, the dam that we see is not the full part of the dam. Like there's a lot that happens below river level. When they were trying to um, construct it, they encountered unstable deposits of glacial till here and water kept seeping through. 
So to solve the problem, they inserted a network of refrigeration tubes in and created a giant ice plug, freezing that a glacial till in place until they could finish their work. That's wild. There was a gravel trail that went even further down. Um, it said one third of a mile, so um, I'm not going to take that today, but it probably gave you an even better view of the dam, hopefully. <laughs> the trail we've been on is paved, so anybody can come check out this um, part of the Highway 20 Gorge Dam Overlook. Diablo Overlook, and there is the dam, right along there. So this is Colonial Peak, this is Pyramid Peak, and that is Davis Peak. time for anything else and you're on highway 20 I recommend this this is incredible just beautiful Highway 20. We'll be coming down that in a minute. You can see the larches are turning. Fall colors. That was gorgeous. I love that viewpoint. This is a nice little walk at the top of Washington Pass. We're going to work our way down in about 10 minutes, I think. We're going to get to the campground. I'm hoping to stay up for the night. There's a hike right there from that campground, so we can do another little hike for today. This is, what, four tenths of a mile probably by the time I get back to the car. And um, it is paved, but uh, there are steep sections and there are rough sections. So just be aware of that. Man, I can't get over looking at this gorgeous chunk of rock. Now we're driving down the road that we looked at from the overpass. Washington Pass is 5,477 feet. And this is some of the most beautiful country you can see. Yay, I found a spot in Lone for Campground. I have not eaten yet and it is 11.30, so I'm going to make some lunch and relax a little here. It is just beautiful. Dave got me some Cajun brats. I'm going to cook all four. Now those are going to take a while. some vegetables, a uh, squash from my garden, and a couple of tomatoes that desperately needed used. I'm going to saute them in this pan and then add a minute rice and cook that to go with my sausages.
Well, I changed my mind and decided to cut the Cajun brats up into my rice dish, which makes it look much more appetizing. The food is simmering. The dogs are resting. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Hmm. That works. Well, it says the first bridge across Pine Creek has been removed, and so it's not recommended to use. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this is where we are. This is the loop for the campground. We're gonna go out on this paved trail, and then it turns to dirt and does a little loop and back. Really cool about this trail, part of it is an original route through the mountains traveled by Native Americans, settlers, prospectors, and later highway surveyors. So there's a lot of history to this trail. So the first bridge is actually still in, um, but it's definitely missing some pieces. The second bridge <laughs> is right next to it, and it is very out. It's such a nice day. So much better than yesterday. Well, I guess when they say the first bridge is out and they don't recommend you going, they don't need to tell you that the other bridge is out. <laughs> huh. The dogs are behind me, but they're not too, they're not rushing across. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Can you jump? <laughs> Luna can jump. So we got to the other side and it's just a jumble of downed logs. We tried going the other way on the loop part of the trail, but it just petered out into a lot of brush. So we just called it a day and headed back to camp to do some relaxing. Well, I feel like I'm cheating. I have my heater on and I'm going to be making some hot cocoa to have with some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> the dogs are all snuggled up. Good morning. It was a rough night's sleep. A mouse got in the van and it was chewing very loudly. I saw it, but I wasn't able to film it and I wasn't able to catch it. It managed to get bait out of my mouse trap twice without getting smacked. So um, hopefully it went home. Um, I finally fell into a sleep of exhaustion. It is now 7 a.m., so well over the time I wanted to break camp. And we are heading to Blue Lake. I see a lot of these sites are empty. They're probably all at either Blue Lake or that Maple Pass Trail. <laughs> well, here we are. Parking lot is full and I parked way at the end, but that's okay. I'll do the details of the full hike as a separate video. I'll just show you the beautiful highlights as part of this full adventure. Trail starts out in this forest. The views just got wonderful. starting to get up into the larches. So they look like an evergreen most of the year with needles, but their needles change color to this gorgeous gold and they are not in fact evergreen. They lose those needles in the winter. Not soft needles. We have probably a little less than a quarter mile till we're at Blue Lake, but man, these golden larches and these beautiful views, there wouldn't even need to be a lake.
And then we were there on the shores of that still alpine lake surrounded by those gorgeous golden larches and frosted rocky peaks. That was an excellent hike. It was very crowded, but very worth it. I got just over five miles round trip and just barely over 900 feet of elevation gain. Let's see if we can get out of our parking spot and go find a place I can finally make coffee and breakfast. We are gonna stop right here by the Skagit River. It is noon and it is time for the dogs and I to both have our lunch. I chopped up one of the Cajun sausages I had left over and I'm going to heat it in the pan, toast this bread, and then I'm gonna put a couple eggs over it. Well, this is not a very attractive breakfast. Uh, my eggs fell out of the refrigerator twice and only this one survived and then it broke in the pan. Visually, not my best work, but it sure was tasty. And that's where I'll leave you for this adventure. I'm gonna have my lunch and hit the road.